Welcome back, everyone, to the ASCAP experience. We've got an amazing session coming up for you now from a, a very dear friend of mine and a fellow Brit, the brilliant composer Lorne Balfe. Lorne has very kindly agreed to show us a breakdown of one of his music cues from the latest Marvel film, Black Widow. We're also joined by some upcoming young composers who will get the opportunity to ask Lorne some questions directly as we go through the queue. So welcome to you guys also. And hi, Lorne, I hope you're well. Very um, good, Simon. Very good. Good to know. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your crazy schedule. I know it's crazy to do this for us right now. Uh, and I know everyone is super excited to see an actual breakdown of your music for this blockbuster movie. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to you and let, let you lead us through it. Good. Well, listen, you know, the reason for kind of doing this was just simply because the one thing that I always learned a lot of was was looking at sequences. Um, and um, the scores were all very well to kind of look at the orchestration and um, the voicing and things like that. But the one big eye opener I personally always had um, was um, looking through sequences and seeing how cues were created and seeing how people worked. And, and the weirdest thing is I, I've, I've assisted quite a lot of composers and worked on quite a, a few projects for, for other people and and seen um, seen how utterly disorganized a lot work. And I just can't get my head around it. And I kind of and I kind of just I, I, I learned I, I, I learned kind of certain shortcuts and things. And I just thought, gosh, it, it's one thing you, you just don't get taught at, at college, weirdly enough, is just streamlining the way you work. Ironically, we're going to talk about streamlining, yet my template is probably about, I don't know, 900 instruments or something. But that's that's a different conversation. But it was just about kind of just simply writing and, and, and the way we kind of treat the sequencer. Because Cubase, to me, um, it, it's an old quote, but but Cubase really is, is my instrument. Um, and sequences now, we just rely on it so much, the way we kind of, we don't have room for pianos. Well, some of some some ASCAP members have rooms for pianos, but not but not not all of us. So um, so I just thought it would be interesting to look at it. So this is a scene. This is a scene from Black Widow, and um, and I'm sure you all know the kind of the process. You 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 do it at college. The concept of spotting spotting a scene. Um, now with Black Widow. Which is very unlike a lot of movies. Um, the what the, there actually wasn't there was no temp uh, when I started. Uh, temp, temp again. I did, I, some some of the people I know from the colleges have talked about temp. Everybody seems to hate temp. I I I, I think temp can be great. I think temp can show you where not to go. There's a reason where that temp the temp is there, and it's it's not to kind of not to rip it off or imitate it or or um, try to do a, a cheap copy. It's the, the director and editor have have spent weeks stuck in a room um, and they have come to the conclusion that this tone, this piece of music, um, but to them is the right tone for the scene. Now, it, it could be musically, it, it, the melodies are wrong and no matter what, but you'll find a lot, a lot of time they start cutting to it. Um, they, so you can see that there's a, there was a whole period of time when I think all action films, you, could, you always knew what the temp was because the tempo was all the same as the Bourne Ultimatum. It was just always the same kind of cutting speed and everything. Um, but with this, actually, there was no, there was no temp. So it was kind of a, a good way to kind of start. Um, and when that happens, um, I personally, I try to kind of, I try to get in there to make our own temp. So if you've got a, if, you, if you're lucky enough, it doesn't always happen, but if you're lucky enough with your um, director and editor is day one of filming, get the music that you have written for this project. Um, and uh, it, it, don't worry about themes. It's got nothing to do with it because the, the, that character, they have, they've developed 
differently on that first day of edit than you than they will be by the end the movie's finished so focus on kind of what the style is of your um of the music that you're going for now with this um this genre was basically like we we know what the avengers kind of orchestration in the world is um but it was heavily russian um so the first thing I started doing with this was to actually start writing, writing suites, not to picture, but as a kind of a, a, a mood, a mood board um, that basically allowed everybody to kind of place them to picture. Yeah, that's it's a good idea. It's a, a good way to work. Now, I try to I try to do this all the time. Um, and a, it's just stops people accusing you of ripping the temp off. Um, or be uh, be everybody falling in love with the temp. That's the biggest thing. You'll you'll end up with the studio loving it, um, or the 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 director falling in love with it. So so that's the other reason for the suites is to create your own temp and give your director and the editor their own um, their own toolkit. But everything is everything is you, and so it means you've already got a a great head start. So. Um, so even before looking at this scene, I started I started writing these suites um, that were meant to kind of be the, the the DNA of what I thought the action would be before even kind of looking at a, a scene in great detail. So in my sequence in front of me, I have normally I keep and again, this is just I think it's good housekeeping if you're working on a um, a film have all your themes to the right have them fully orchestrated to the right so that you're able to continuously grab grab the dna of your of of your film or your tv show so what i tend to do is i have the characters um themes and i have you know if there's the the, the winning theme or the hope theme or wh whatever the mood themes are i always have them in my sequence I keep everything to the right, um, and it's purely for reference. Um, and and I learned that mainly because the amount of hours wasted opening up sequences to try and find sweets for that. Oh no, that theme is going. Also, the other reason is, is so that you know what your theme is. Um, it's it's shocking the amount of times I've kind of worked on things, and I know people kind of sometimes write it down on a piece of paper. They keep it at the side, but it's just so that you can actually um also sometimes if you're modifying your theme say that you've you've written it but then you're you're getting more into this kind of zone you're you're, you're changing it you just keep updating that theme so it's to your right so um this is a bit of like an overview question but i was i was curious well first of all i was so excited to learn that kate shortland was the director for um for black widow because i actually was saw her early film lore when i was oh yes and film school and was so moved by it. And it's such a powerful film and like grand in scale, but also very intimate. And so I was curious, like when you were first working with her, how do you get on, how do you get on the same page, you know, with her particularly or, or maybe other directors you're working with for the first time? I think uh, okay, weirdly with her, I had been spending about the last year and a half before that we spoke, um, I was spending half of the month, every two weeks um, in, in LA, uh, commuting back and forth for work. And um, I, ha I had watched a film called The Berlin Syndrome about four or five times. I kept watching it. It was on, you know, that route, that period of time when you're kind of continuously commuting. And she she had made that film, it, it, so that was a kind of a weird coincidence. So I I, I knew her um, when we started kind of communicating. The connection was she she was she was looking for a school that was about Natasha's background and Natasha's journey, and ironically, we kind of. We all knew, um, and not to give things away, but I think people know, we all know what happens. So, um, so it, we, we know where we're going, we just don't know where we're from. 
and that's what the make that that's what the discussion was about um and i think what i what i kind of like everything is everything's a pitch that's the way i look at it because the thing is that you could be the you can have great you can be the best um best composer out there but you, you doesn't mean you get the job and i think that we all kind of we see you see reasons why and yes every lots of people can write 10 times better themes than a lot of us that are working but it's understanding the storytelling and 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 i think it's about being a filmmaker more more than a composer personally to me um because you you are you are a department it's it's very few depart departments on the film are, are kind of singular even though we're not singular we, we are we are a, ma a massive team but the makeup department the, the sound department are always recognized as a mass of bodies um and the composer kind of has to kind of um work with the editor work with the director work with the sound department so Kate and I basically started talking about the, the kind of the background of of Natasha and, and what I and what I kind of said after kind of lots of time talking we she she would phone me every time in between um shooting so every time there was a break she'd phone and we kind of have quick snippets of discussions about um T Natasha and we were talking about her and Yelena's background as, as children and I kind of thought okay well what's the music that they would have listened to as as children um and then I I, I started looking at traditional music and and of course some of it has become you know Tetris is a traditional theme so I thought okay I'm going to start writing folk songs that were probably that we could they could have possibly listened to um, with their own lyrics, which was all based on Russian literature. Um, and and that was how kind of instead of the, the talking had got so far. And I think it was just a case of I just had to write something and and present it and and give it to her to, to listen to, because I think after a while talk talking, uh, you run out of steam unlike what we're going to do today but i think i think normally it's just you you there's only so much you can do you've just got to produce the goods and 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 i think it was what she was wanting was this backstory and the film and that the film had it so it wasn't like we were they were struggling to try to kind of um help find this past that wasn't there it, it it was all there so the whole so what i started doing was writing these folk tunes that um you know the red army also was a big influence the music of the red red army and i pushed that more to yelena as well um but it was to write folk music and 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 then write a suite that's you know a minute a minute and a half two minutes where you see where where she could listen to and see the, the the journey of Natasha's uh, life, and so it's not just about oh, isn't that a, isn't that a pretty tune? It's it's beyond that. It's a journey. Um, that piece of music may never get used. It doesn't matter. What it's about is showing the character's past and the development. So that's that's how we began, and and then that and then that kind of then led to all the, the concept of suites, i.e. what we're looking at now, um, which was the concept of action suites, because we had talked about what is the, what is the, um, what is the vocabulary for, for the action music. And um, so I started looking at uh, Shostakovich and Prokofiev, and I, 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 unlike probably all, the majority of you nev never graduated um, at music college, so my so I have a sheer lack in uh, in musical education, uh, so there has to be a lot of kind of research when I, when I start doing something. But the point of it was looking looking at Russian music is always fascinating because there's very few music around the world that doesn't rely on its own instrumentation. You know, Celtic music. Uh, it helps to have Yulian pipes or or 
or bagpipes or fiddles, but Russian music, you, you don't need, you don't need a hundred balalaikas in the room to tell you that it's Russian music. So, so there's a robustness to it. Um, so again, character suites presented it to Kate. Um, we were kind of, we, we knew we were on the right path with um, um, Drakeoff, which is Ray Winston's character and Yelena and Natasha, and then the concept of the sisters theme. So again, everything not to picture, just a clear presentation of, of, of the path. And then in front of us, that leads us nicely to the factor of the concept of suites, um, the action suites. So, so um, the first suite, um, I'll, I'll, just play you, I'll, I'll just play you a little bit from it. And then if, if you want more, you can uh, go to iTunes and uh, enjoy. <laughs> um, but this is just a little sample of it. So it's uh, you. You won't necessarily be whistling whistling it down the street, but the whole point of it was uh, the whole point of it was um, trying to create a tone and something that's kind of modern based. So, so that was kind of the DNA. Now, also the the other really most I think the most important thing which which um, I think I've learned about the reason for having our suites and the, uh, the utter importance with sequencing is to make sure, um, for example, so there's the, the, the uh, ensemble sample, the CMS ensemble. Um, so if we look at that, um, the, it's, 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 uh, er, er, there's no debates about note length. There's no debates about, um, especially with a piece like this, of, of, of what, our, what our volumes are. But the main thing is, that it is the reason for being so good with housekeeping um, is because this piece of music, if you've programmed it really well, you can then take it to another scene and change the dynamics in a matter of seconds, and it's already going to work. You know, you've 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 got to kind of, it's all very well write, writing the music now, but you, you've got to be really good at programming, and it and it does take more effort. But the reason for programming it so is 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 so that um, the cross the, the cross samples every, every we know where those marks are. So if it's a quiet piece, you literally if you've programmed it right, all you have to do is your quick tweak key is put it up. You know, plus thirty or something, and it will still match your sample cross uh, cross sample. So, so the housekeeping is is so important um, with with your suites and and being able to kind of um, you know I write quickly. I know that maybe may sound unartistic to say to write quickly, but but it, it is part of the job, and it's it's about. Um, 
uh, no, you've got a deadline. And with a movie like this, it's it's you 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 have to deliver to uh, whatever two hours of music on this certain date. And if you're messing around because it's all messy and it's not quantized, and things like the main volume, you don't put your main volume in or your expression. Every time you open up your sequence, you're starting from scratch. So just really be good at at um, um, housekeeping. And the other important thing about ha housekeeping is. Is which which is the weirdest thing? The key editor, the key editor is your best friend when it comes to se sequencing. The amount of times that you go to a session and there's wrong notes, and the reason is because you've never no the person who's worked on it has not checked the key editor, and all you have to do is simply when you finish writing your cue, select all minus your percussion because they'll be working on different samples. And you can clearly see where the wrong notes are. That, that poor Steve and Mary in the bass department, they, they, you know, we don't want to waste time um, trying to kind of figure out, oh, well, the, the tuba's on a C and you're a B. Just, just, just have some respect for your orchestrator and just double, double, double check. Because if you get it wrong, um, in Black Widow, we, ha we had 118 musicians in um in studio one and every minute costs money it's that you know it's it's thousands so if you're kind of sitting there because you can't quite figure out what the base was you should have done your homework and you've only got yourself to blame basically so um and if you're sitting there with your director in a session and there's notes wrong it's just it's it's um not good Thank you for having us here. It's really interesting. It's really nice to have you here. Um, I was wondering how many suites do you write when you, you, you're you on this kind of project? Um, do you spend like a lot of time on this or is, just, is this just like uh, at the beginning of the project you just do like three or four or is it really like something you you spend time on um, to, to make sure that uh, the director is going to understand um, what you want to bring to the project? I think it, it, it's 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 uh, every, every project's different. I think I think if I if you with looking at this um, with this look, some directors want to keep experimenting um, with with Mission Impossible with Chris. Um, I will. Th there will be something where you'll go down this rabbit hole and and you may not realize where you where where you're tunneling but somebody else listening to it may get inspiration from it and i think that i think that's the that's an interesting thing about look the answer is it's time if you've got if you if there's enough time i'll, I'll keep writing i'll keep writing until the you know the cows come home um if there's a feeling that picture is continuously changing, d d don't don't rush. Um, and then I think I think you kind of just know you 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 know when you've hit the wall. There's just no point writing anything else. Um, and also it depends on the kind of the 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 nature of the project. If you're if you're working on a on a animation, there's no real point personally to spend a lot of time kind of trying to do action suites of things because you know the the scoring is going to be a, a total different um work process but the themes i think what i try to do is say um okay natasha with this we've got natasha's theme um then we've got uh then I, then to showcase it uh basically i did um a sad the sad natasha and victorious natasha just to kind of just show the different emotions that you can get um and the same and the same with Dracoff. it was uh okay here's some different emotions so I, I you know on some on some movies it can be up to four hours of sweets i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or if that just shows utter incompetence uh, or I don't know but but I, I think what it's about is you you'll learn you'll learn by dialogue with your um editor and director you'll you you will be the judge 
of of how much you should write because you'll sense they're getting a bit impatient or they, they've got the point we got it let's move on so so you know start working to picture so every case is every case is different um but i think it's it's about um it's like it's like all of this. It's it's about judging judging the room. Even though we're in the world of COVID and we haven't been in rooms with anybody, um, it, it's it's about judging the room and, and just and just seeing like, this this piece is not working. The st the style isn't working. All we're trying to do is say, um, is this your is this is this your story? Now, they've been writing the script or producing it or working on it for years and we get brought in five six months before so we're kind of we're late to the party so to me um some films uh, some films what um yeah with 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 michael bay michael the last movie i think it was roughly about four four hours um but it's developments that some pieces are very simple but it was just something in that suite that triggered that triggered inspiration for him and the same with Kate there's one section so that one section then gets elaborated and becomes its own piece so it, it's it kind of opens up cans of worms because it starts feeding you to that but but there is uh but then sometimes the main theme is all you know the main theme is all you need and then you can get going I think you just you just judge it you, you personally judge the scene yourself Hey Lawrence, good to see you again. Good seeing uh, you too, Cameron. So you're you're no stranger to these large scale action. I thought, I thought you were about to start singing a Rick Astley song there, but anyway. <laughs> films like you know Gemini Man and Tomorrow War and Mission Impossible and stuff like that. So I'm wondering, you know, when you transition from project to project of similar genre, do you maintain a, a similar color palette and instrumentation, or are you starting with a blank template every single time? It's, you know, it's really, it's, it's interesting. So many, some composers, friends of, friends of ours will start with a, an empty, an, an empty template. Literally, they will start loading um, instrument by instrument. Um, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't personally have like a week to, to spend on, on, on a clarinet's a clarinet and a violin's a violin. So what I try to do is kind of, I, I keep the same orchestral template. Um, and it's purely just because, if, if I'm working with, with the orchestra, that, that's the thing. Um, and so so the kind of, and you know, technology wise, it's just create, because the sample like Spitfire bring out a new um, library every day, it seems, you know, you can't keep up with it. and and I, And, I seem to buy every library that comes out. I, I buy, I seem to buy it all and then I never have time to look at it. Um, but I, I, I always keep, I had just, I have a, an orchestral template, which is just your normal orchestra. Um, and that'll change sometimes with different articulations because, you know, sometimes there'll be a new feather bowing um, technique or, or something. And, we kind of keep that there and then at the end of the then at the bottom then i kind of then start uh look you know what it depends on the budget actually it depends on the budget sometimes um i'll know who the musicians are so when writing i'll just use the normal samples knowing perfectly well i'm very fortunate that I, that tina Geyer or peter gregson can play it and we can do electric cello or something so that the whole kind of that you uniqueness comes to that um but template wise because of because of the nature of of the the, the speed i write at I, I i do just keep i i have a sketch template which is um very simple long violin short violin violin pit um you know, I did a 30 instruments, say, um, and then I've got, and then I've got the beast um, where I have every, everything known to man um, and every drum known to, to man, it, you know, as you can see, it, it, it's, 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 
way too much but personally i just find and this is actually a cleaned up this is a cleaned up um template but it it just it's just so i don't slow down with technology that that's that to me techno technology as as great as it helps me i just find sometimes it slows us down in that work, work effort so so no, the orchestra te template is always the same and then and then and then the the uniqueness kind of changes but in regards to kind of what you say about the the, ac the action stuff um it's if 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 you've got time we tried to start making our own samples um like with mission impossible we, we had we're fortunate to have it it took maybe two months to kind of sample uh bongo bonanza and um you know, there was 12 bongo players and so we, you have to do them all different volumes different ways of playing it uh then solos um so then so then you know that that then that's the ip for that project that doesn't appear in anything else um and i think i think that's the tricky thing now with so many virtual synths coming out um you buy it and that sound the way i look at it is that that's a lovely synth I'm not going to say names but here's a great synth um it will be on every tv show in the next two weeks especially if you look at the rate of how many tv shows are being made now with streaming um always bear that in mind and and you play it and you go god this is a great sound the fact is that is going to now be on everything if you think it's good everybody else thinks it's good um and that that unique sound that you think that you're working with is going to be on a rival project that you're working on and um you know that's i i think that i think that's what separate that, that's that's where the big divide is i think um with composers you see those that 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 yes you've got your orchestra but it's the production around it um just try not to use presets as much as they sound great it was it was like i think it was the early 90s and the um the d50 came out and there was a great preset on it, the dream or something. And, and every song was, it was on every song. And, and you know, just really try, treat your synths the same way as you would treat a musician. Um, that, you know, it's not, they're not just a violinist. It's, it's what the, the 30 years that they've been practicing, that's what you're paying for. And with a synth, you've got to make it, you've got to make it unique. And, and so, so yeah so that kind of, and look with bad boys there was a kind of a, a latin american feel so there was a lot of kind of a lot of different percussion being used in that and and guitars rock guitars which you don't normally get to come out at action scores these days um so yeah it, you know i i think i think you've got to because i think sometimes as composers we 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 don't necessarily we don't mean to but we do repeat ourselves because it's 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 in a it's under our fingers that there's notes and there's chord progressions and the way that we feel when playing um you you've got you've got those chords that you like you do the bar or do you go oh there we go that's that feels good um so that will always happen and there'll be kind of ways you kind of phrase melodies will always kind of happen so 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 the template yes have your bog standard horrible term but have your bog standard template but then make sure that you've got your unique ip at the bottom um and if you've got a budget then then you know you create you create listen you don't even need a budget nowadays with native instruments you, you can make you start making your own sounds um but that's time you know it's time consuming but it is about i i think i think if you look if you look at the successful composers and i think there's always there's a concept to to the soundtrack it's not just a great melody or or style there there is also a musical concept and you don't necessarily need to know that right at the beginning that can that can happen whilst you're working through it um uh, and and with black widow 
the concept was thankfully right from the beginning it was figuring out this russian this the russian world and the russian vocabulary um so that was a big influence and and sometimes yeah you know there's some scenes in it where there's drone textures and and it was a it was recording you know, like one banner like not a hundred but one but but making that into a drone texture um instead of just kind of having a synth doing it but it's it's yeah but then again i know many friends we all do that that will just start from a blank canvas and load each sound up from scratch um but i just uh I just don't have time. I don't, I don't have the mental time for that. I like to kind of sit down and and just and go. Okay, here we go. Start playing. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Earlier, Brett. you had mentioned using uh, modifying and tweaking the thematic material that you come up with as you're working, and I was yeah. curious if you have the time. If you make a discovery about something that you really like, if you have stuff that's already been approved do you go back to that material revisit it and see if these new discoveries that you've made can be applied there as well yes one tries but then sometimes you get told why did that change it was perfectly good why are you changing it you, you, you mess yeah you, yeah you're messing it up you had gold and you're turning it into shizer so just don't no, don't don't touch it so it, it's a difficult one because yeah, so, sometimes we've got our muso, our muso hat on, and there was there was something that was innocently brilliant about the simplicity of what was there, um, and because we've got more time on our hands, we start delving into it and making it overcomplicated, and but but it is it is it, it's a difficult one, and 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 and, and I've had it so many times when I thought I've improved it and I, I may have thought that but then but then to the director or editor they then they then feel that there's a there's a change in the force there's something that has changed and why why the hell has it changed and and rightly so it could have been it could have been fine if we had just left it but what there's just to me it, it's you've got to keep experimenting with it because you you might find a better way of doing it and you might find the, uh, uh, an improvement and if you just kind of leave it be and, and walk away from it i think it's our responsibility you know it's it's difficult i i never watch i i can't think maybe once in the last few years i never watch anything i've worked on or done because it's to sit there going, oh, I would have done this, or I would have changed that. Oh, I, I, uh, that that was the wrong version, wasn't it? I thought there was a version seven point eighty three. So you know, it, it's just, it's um, it's 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 a diff, it's a difficult one. But you've got to keep. Uh, to me, I I never I never kind of give up just because they approved it. They might have approved that on Monday because they thought that was good. You you might be able to modify it and change it to make it amazing by friday so um there's no harm in it and again it's about it's about um it's about reading the room you know you do it once and then no, 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 it's fine the way you know it's gonna if you do it again and you get the the eyebrows it's like they, they're gonna start losing faith in you and think that you're simple because you're just not li you're not listening it's just fine to leave it so each situation is totally different, basically. Hi, I was uh, yeah. wondering about the connection between the Avengers franchise as a whole. Yeah. So obviously that's such a massive universe and um, so many different composers and different themes. Yeah. But because Natasha is such a key Avenger, I was wondering if there was any ever a conversation about whether you wanted to park back to those themes or just completely steer clear of them and do something new yes do you know franchises and themes are uh, i i i think um i think i've probably done the most amount of research on on this concept known to life because i, I find it fascinating when 
if you look at franchises and and why themes don't get used i i think it's personally i think it's it's a it, it's it's um it lets the audience down we we've we've got we associate those characters with with the themes and 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 now now having done a few franchises i now find out why that is the reason and um ego is one reason the the compo the new composer doesn't want to touch the other composer uh, theme which to me is just ridiculous because it, it it's it should be about the, the the audience and their experience um sometimes yes yeah, sometimes they, they 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 feel that they can write better um but if i look at things like terminator there there is a, an iconic theme um that in the film sometimes it just you'd hear it at the beginning it was gone and and if you've got if you've got arnold that's his theme is it's you know when the time is right play the theme um and reinventing it isn't necessarily right all the time um so with the marvel universe um we looked did all the research and found and found that there was there was there seemed to be hints of a, a black widow theme not hint there was but it was sparsely used um so so that that was kind of okay we've got that food group um we've got the avengers theme um and that is kind of that you know that that is now part of musical musical folklore i think it's it's uh star wars mission impossible uh and the you know the avengers you hear in commercials and everybody knows what it is now whether you've seen the avengers or not it doesn't matter um so we we knew we had that dna and then when working on the film it was when when do you use it when do you use it so you get that shiver up your spine that tingle on your arm and um i'm not going to say when or how you used it um but it was used it, you know you tried in lots of different places and you soon kind of looking at things you go oh that's i'm being academic now i'm not i'm not thinking about the bigger picture and and, and what the audience are going to feel uh and it's got to be used in the right spot so to me, I think it's, it's always so important you look at the past. Um, and it's the same with the Mission Impossible franchises. You know, I went, I, I, I started going back and watching all the, t the TV shows and, um, and discovering different ways. You know, the, the, there's two main themes in Mission. You've got the, ma the main theme uh, and then you've got the plot theme. But in that main opening theme, there's so many things going on. There's a, there's a rhythm that's amazing and that's unique. Um, and you've got this call and response melody. So I think doing the research is, 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 is really important. And, and with this, the, yes, there was, the, there was a Black Widow theme, but the film was about really kind of how, how she became Black Widow. Uh, so we need we, so kate knew that we needed a we needed a, not a new theme but an, a, an additional theme to to show the past um and the same with yelena and um so that's that was the reasoning for starting new the creating these new themes it was it was really about the uh what is natasha's what is natasha's theme before she became black with her and 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 that was the kind of that was the arc. So so yes, um, due to the fact I've been in a few franchises, I just think it's so important to to look at it. And also, actually, one other reason: sometimes the studios change, so you can't use the themes. That's the other reason. Sometimes they 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 a, a different production company are doing it. So so you get turned any time you touch that theme, it's a license fee of like. 80 grand and and you know it, it, that will happen sometimes so um but then it was the same on but you know bad boys the theme was in one i don't think i don't i don't think it appeared in two actually so the first the first thing i did in three was was did the trevor i had to get the trevor 
Raven MIDI sequence. I actually found it in our in our <laughs> in our backups at the studio. Um, and um, and do it because it's it's the reason why. I you know I don't know how you all feel, but it's the reason I got into I got into, I got into movies because of these memories. And music is the memory when you hear E.T.'s theme and and Star Wars. When I go and watch the Star Wars now, um, I want to hear that theme. And and the, and with Bond, the same with Bond, you know, it, it, it's 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 part of what you're seeing and what you're feeling. So so you you can't be dis, you shouldn't you shouldn't be dismissive. That's what I think. Um, but but if you are kind of being invited into this world. It's especially with the Avengers. It, it is a, it's character led, um, and and also you know, listen, you, you can't imitate. You know, Alan Silvestri's orchestrations are just the, the top, and they're unbelievable. And um, you know, you're kind of like crambling, you know, in the dark trying to get, do flute runs and, and things. And and it's it's um, but the work, the, the the thematic world. I think it's really always important to try to kind of bring it back and 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 ha and have a discussion why why isn't it being allowed to come back? Um, and it's 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 the same with games. Games do games do games just don't do it really well for some reason. They want to they've got franchises and they just stop. They give up on the themes and they start new themes again. Um, I, don't, I don't I don't quite know why. Um, but I think with this, with the with the Marvel universe, especially Avengers, being loyal to the theme is is important. Personally, that's what I think. The other thing, the one thing is this actually this cue um, had a lot of revisions and a lot of picture cuts. So the one thing I'm going to say that is really important is actually not in it, but it's your marker. Your marker information, just fill it with as much as you want. <laughs> just really just, you know, you basically want to know that scene so that you can just not even look at it. And your sequencer has got that information. And especially nowadays, everybody's, you know, well, the way I run, I keep everything in, 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 the, in the computer. I keep picture and sound. I'm not bothering going to Pro Tools. All in the box. Um, and sometimes if you're traveling and on the, the laptop, which is uh, not often now with laptops, they're more powerful, but you know, you can deactivate your video and you still got all the information in front of you. So you can just stare at it and, and, and get, um, thing about it. Also, most important, keep, keep your damn, t um, time signatures in there. The amount of composers I know that just go freestyle and they're kind of writing away. It's just, again, it, it's a, just a lack of respect to your orchestrator. They've got to figure it out, figure it out, um, and it cha it changes what you end up delivering. And it's the same with note lengths. Um, I sound like a teacher, a bad teacher, but but it's note lengths are so important because you get because that information, if it's ba 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 ba, if you've if you've got the exact note lengths programmed correctly, there's no debate. It's that is it. What I'm hearing is what I'm seeing. Um, so um, enough of my yapping. Shall we watch this scene? And we're, we'll, we'll do it with no, with no music. And this is. Um, and this and this is how we kind of, this is how we spotted it. Um, originally. Jag får följa.
Help me push. Yeah, I got you. No. So, so the you know the in, the interesting thing about that is you look at it and you go, um, I, I, you don't have to work hard. It's a great action sequence as it is, which is always kind of a. Um, you're fortunate if you get that. Um, I just want to quickly just play the other suite that the base uh, that we kind of um, used as inspiration um, for it, uh, which was this one. Um, and let's just jump to um, see. That's why we love markers. Big theme moment. That classic. <laughs> So now let's look at the cue. So that so that kind of is an, an action motif, the way I kind of da 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 ba da da da. That that is kind of in my my DNA of my action suites. Um, so uh, that was the basis. I interesting enough, it just what I I think is really good and fun is to take music and just throw it to picture and and you'll 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 see if the tempo's right you'll see you'll kind of um i think it's really interesting it's kind of sad that i say that this is interesting but i quite it's quite enjoyable to watch the sequence where you just have a click um playing no music just the click because then you start figuring out what the the, the tempo of what the editor is working at and that they, they have got inbuilt built inbuilt tempos sometimes with scenes and um and you'll you'll figure it out and and sometimes music you can just just you know just take like a suite or sort of anything to put it on and you'll start seeing oh that's interesting it's making the scene slower it's making it faster um and that action suite was uh and you thematically that would work i put it on but it was not um the tempo of it was was not right so I changed the tempo but it was taking kind of the, those ostinatas and uh food groups um as a basis and then um getting it to picture so we'll watch it uh let's let's play it with um maybe with that without the sound effects and i apologize if anything i say sounds elementary but you know you, you just never know it's it's like you know you can have we could spend two hours talking about conforming picture, which is something I think is just an utter skill. Um, and and I, you know, I think you get presented with a scene, and I think what nobody really tells you is that that scene is good, especially on big films like this. That scene is going to change every day. It's going to the picture cut is changing every day, and your music's going to have to change. Your music editor will give you the information saying you've lost two frames here, 10 frames here, 10 frames here. So you get that information. And that's the academic way of looking at it. You've got to kind of think, how do I conform this? How can I make this musical? And I think that's the most important thing. Um, 
so maybe we'll do another ask that workshop on conforming because it's just it's mm -hmm. just <laughs> oh boy um but it's uh but, but it change it changes it changes that piece of music and what the the, the point of it is um anyway so based on those two suites knowing that's our kind of that's our dna let's have a listen to this this cue and and also i think it's bearing in mind um watching a cue like that uh that scene the action is so great you kind of know that you just you you, you just have to be there for su support or subtle punctuation you don't you don't really it's a great sequence um so you don't have to kind of be I think the phrase is working too hard, which sometimes you have to do. Um, anyway, let's have a listen to this, j j uh, just the just the music. So you, so you hear what happened, basically. The car wreck that happened. Um, so anyway, so that's that's how that kind of happened. Now, just out of interest, you know, I think I I think it just depends on your kind of orchestration. But but I, I I'm I'm a massive fan of trying to kind of look at things as a complete identity. So if we just go to our brass folder, which again just because because of the purposes of this presentation, everything's been tidied up very neatly um, so there's no no lo lots of gaps because normally there are lots of different articulations um i'm 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 not a i'm not a big fan of the quick keys oops a uh, big fan of the um quick keys uh, program changes uh because all the libraries work differently and I'm, uh, and there's always this mess you know you spend a lot of time I don't know, rummaging for the sounds. So what I I I just have all the articulations loaded, and that's why they're just they're so big. Um, but let's just go back to uh, bar twenty nine. I'm just going to play this, and and basically, uh, firstly, I love brass. I'm a failed. Uh, I did trumpet lessons for about five years. So basically, I try to give trumpet players. Um, I, I want their lips bleeding at the end. <laughs> um, and it's the same with the percussionists. I, 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 uh, uh, and, and, you know, I want those hands red. Um, but it's just interesting just looking at, you know, the way different people write. Um, and, and brass, I kind of always, uh, brass, I, I, I really enjoy writing brass. I, I, I find it fascinating to kind of the, the, um, the way that if you can just get your, if that's your, that's your trombones. What I love doing is that's your trombones. I love getting the horns like this. So, so I make my map, my piano map, I play it. Um, and then the voicing, I try to do that just because I visually looking at how it is in the studio, the, the trombones are, are to your uh, right, and then your horns are to your left. Um, and it just opens that chord up to make it bigger. And I think it's interesting sometimes, because some, I think sometimes people feel that, oh, well, how many brass players do you have? And sometimes there's 12 horns or sometimes there's six. I think doing that with your voicing, tend, to me at least, tends to open it up. 
uh, and the trumpet writing I, I the trumpet writing I get tellings off by the, the the trumpet team all the time every session I get a rollicking about that's too high or something you know but anyway um but ha just have a listen to this this is just this is the brass stem And, and again, it's to me at least kind of kind of a bit of Russian, a, ru a bit of Russian flavor going on there with the brass. Um, so when writing the cues, I try to look at everything as sections uh, and just see that um, that it's a complete identity. You know, you, you've got your harmonies, you've got your melody. Obviously, you don't want it tooty all the time. Um, and then and then scrolling down. Uh, we've got the brass, uh, and then so just sort of a quick look at some percussions, shall we? Um, and just we, just because there's effects and and things going on, basically we're just gonna just we bounce it and make it audio. Um, but you'll you'll see the 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 the. The utter, <laughs> the, the uh, utter tidiness that has to occur, um, and and it's really for simple reasons. It's because th this 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 will go into several other cues, um, and 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 uh, you know real musicians will play it. And if you're just getting a great groove and it's going and it feels good and it's, oh, this is wonderful. You put it in front of the musicians and then the, the, where's the accent? They, you know, you've got to be clean with it. Anyway, what, I only put you through a, a few bars of this, but this, this is the, this is the uh, percussion. Okay, so, so, so it's, it's, you know, again, it's not going to be number one on uh, Spotify playlists, but, but, but the thing is, is that it's just, um, you know, it's, it's neat, it's organized. And also when, with the sound effects, you, there's a lot going on and you don't necessarily have to kind of work too hard at it. Um, and we'll just quickly go up to the strings. And if anybody's got any question about and and this and and and, and what's going on here, you know, there's so there's lots of uh, this is um, you know trying to kind of get it. It's in some sometimes it depends. Sometimes if there's a, a lack of time. The programming has to get pushed to the side, unfortunately. Uh, but directors and editors are so they. I I, I get told still sometimes um it doesn't sound good or it doesn't sound real and i think everybody's getting used to the quality of samples now and they feel that it should sound real even in the demo um so it is really Im important um to get your demo sounding right but we'll just uh, we'll go from uh 21 i'll just play you just the the strings and when recording this We'll, 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 um, with action music, I'll always try to record by sections. So there'll be a, a pass A and a pass B. A pass A will be, actually, I lie with this, there's three passes um, uh, because we can, Simon. You see. <laughs> um, they, um, it's so that there's more bodies, there's more bodies on, on the parts. Um, so a lot of the school pass A, would be the chord progressions. Uh, pass B would be the shorts, which are there at the bottom. And pass three would be the melodies. So, so, um, oh, so that, could it, could it, for, so it's cleaner in case you have to edit around, or is it just? Uh, 
yeah, 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 yes, you know, look, you cannot beat the 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 sound of everybody playing at the same time. It's 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 majestic. It's beautiful. Mm. Um, but it's but we're we're filmmaking and we're and there's a there's a dub stage sitting there where after we've recorded this, this picture is changing again. It's it's going to keep changing until it's finished. Um, so you've got to keep that in mind. And and if I've got a if we've got a melody playing, um, and you've got short strings underneath, when that edit happens, you're 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 limiting the the amount of uh, chances there are to make it not sound noticeable. Um, and I think with action sequences also. Just always do your short strings separately because they are they are going to be on that fader um, that the dubbing mixer um, is going to push because that can cut through the sound of gunfire that can cut through the sound of cars and things. It, it, it's just great for them to have control. Um, whereas the chord complement, it's not really going to help them on the dub stage. We might like it; it might sound lovely. And it can it's great to hear, but 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 the 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 working process for them on the dub stage, they love it. They love everything being separated. And 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 with this, we recorded we recorded when possible the emotional moments. We recorded everybody together. Um, we record, uh, but the action sequences really tried to kind of have as much wide as possible. Um, uh, trump trumpets trumpets are always recorded separately because they're def deafeningly loud even mm. though the, even though there's only well only the four four of them are six uh you know they're still beating 12 french horns and 12 bones but um but yeah but let's have a quick li listen to this and and this is and this is kind of this is the the, the, the string pass So, so the other reason for getting the, um, the the separate passes is is getting is getting more bodies onto the pass, um, and I can't remember how many strings we had. Maybe, let's say sixty, a lot, sixty or seventy. <laughs> we got fifty or sixty, anyway. Um, and and being able to kind of and of course because of you you know union rules, you can't do it all in the same session. So so we'd have string pass A. In the morning session, string pass B, in your afternoon session, um, and try to work in order so that your mixing team can keep, they can keep finishing cues. Just do really um, focus on making sure that you finish your food groups, um, uh, and yes, so that you would have, say, 60, 60 uh, 40 violins playing that melody. Whereas if you had them all playing at the same time. You'd be losing some of the bodies because they've got to do the short strings. So, um, so th th that's kind of it, it makes it difficult when you kind of do the live version at the Royal Albert Hall and, and the LSO, <laughs> the LSO want to play it. You're like half the sound, half the sound. But it's just I, I think again with the type of genre of movie and, and kind of sound that we were going for with this. Um, being able to have the three passes, and, and sometimes there's probably four passes. Um, it just it helps. It helps. Look, it helps the film most importantly, but it helps. It helps the the dubbing mixers on the stage, uh, being able to kind of have total control um, musically with what they're they're able to do, basically. Well, my, my question at first was just a comment because after you hear this action cue, like my immediate reaction is that 
the cue is so well choreographed with the stunts and with like the bullets and the gunfire. And, but you mentioned with the picture, you know, lock changing so often, yeah. are the moments just now happy accidents or do you keep that in mind with the percussion of hitting those moments? It's almost like Mickey Mousing. It feels so bespoke to the sound design, but also the, the stunts. Like when she, you know, like gets yeah. kicked in the back of a knee, you know, there's like a moment, yeah. yeah. There's there's never a happy accident. It was always on purpose. It was always <laughs> um, um, uh, no. Uh, uh, there's happy accidents all the time, um, and I think that sometimes, um, you know, sometimes if you're fortunate, um, look, there's 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 a whole job that never gets really discussed. Music editors, they are so essential um, to this size of of um budget of movie um they i i i've seen you know some music editors that just they can they can take i've well, i've seen it with some films where, where uh, on projects i've worked with with somebody like alex gibson who who works with chris nolan a lot and michael bay alex will take a piece of music and and reinvent it and you watch the scene and you and he slowed it down or he worked on tenant you know he, he would slow it down totally change it and it works brilliantly um and then when you go and record something it get the picture's being hacked and, and he will salvage it and make it look like nothing happened um sometimes editors when they're when they're continuously they know that piece of music now so so sometimes they they will cut now to that tempo Right. which is really useful and one and one useful thing is always is always give your music editor a click track um it's a bit more difficult with the editors uh because it's just taking up more space but but with um with music editors make sure that 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 two mix that you've got has a, a duplicate which is a click track that matches so that that they can see where the chopping is ha happening. It will just save hours in the process. Um, but but no, with, with something like this, it's it's um, you you you've got lots of different factors. You've got the piece is written. It's written to picture, um, and then and then because it's there, the back the, the editor has got that tempo now, um, yeah. and 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 some will and with Lee on this film um yeah you know she, she it, it was uh it's only when you start looking at things you can some you can sometimes tell where the edits are you'll start seeing you know slight tempo changes going on or nine eight bars which are the devil um um but it's it's um but also yeah it's it's it, conforming i think conforming is just such an important skill to learn uh, and it changes the way you're you're telling a story musically, because if you're just taking frames out here, frames out there, you're changing the music, and it's not going to work as well. And and what I tried to do with conforming is is don't necessarily worry about the middle or what's going on here or here or here. Look at how you begin and how you end, and 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 amazing discoveries happen sometimes you can figure out i don't need to snip here 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 i actually could just i could actually just change the whole thing by losing a bar at the end or losing a section at the beginning or do, you, know, you don't need to worry about the fact there are cuts throughout it um uh, but with action cues yeah you just again you go back and, and um amazing accidents happen Sometimes they just they just that that conforms happened and you're sitting there and it's, and it's like, wow, that, that was a different total different way of hitting it. But that's why it goes back to getting your sweets and throwing it to picture and seeing what, what happens. And you go, oh, that's an that's an interesting, not a mistake, it's an interesting discovery. How about that? Let's go with discovery. Yeah, it's a disco it's a it's a discovery. There are no mistakes, only discoveries. <laughs> <laughs> Norm Balfe, 21. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> really good. 
uh, uh, I was having a conversation with a composer who told me that, you know, writing film music is basically a concerto for dialogue and, and sound design. So they, you know, will take precedence over, over the music in some respects. So I'm wondering with these big action sequences with all of this, you know, sound design and the bullets and, and all the sound effects and all that, did that inform any of your musical decisions to kind of, you know, get out of the way and not rub up against some of that? Or were you just, you know, going, going all the way regardless of, of Full throttle. Yeah. Full throttle. <laughs> um, you, you know what, Cameron, the one thing I, I think, I just don't, I don't think that there are any rules. I, I, I think, I think, I think as soon as you think that there's a rule, then we all get stuck and you, you just don't know. I, I think sometimes, um, sometimes I, I've, I've gone to the cinema and seen the film and like you'd spent months on this massive action sequence in the middle and you go and they literally cut it out and all you hear is sound effects. And it, ne it didn't necessarily have anything to do with what you had written. It was what was before and what was coming. Um, it was just relentless. Um, the, the, the sound and the music. Um, and I think that um, you just, you, it, it, everything's different. It's like gunfire. Gunfire is a really difficult one to write to. But then, like, the, somebody said to me the rule with gunfire was you just don't write percussion around it. And then in, in Bad Boys for Life, all the, the gunfire scenes, it was all this Latin American drums continuously because that's what, that's what they liked. And it, and it worked for the scene. And, um, and sometimes... Sometimes then, uh, then the directors might change their mind. They might go, you know what, we've we've had enough sound effects. That can go to the back. So I don't, I, I'm, I don't think that there, there are there are any rules. There shouldn't be any rules, because because if there were, then we're all going to be doing the same, and that's boring. So so I I, I think, and also always remember. <laughs> That that sound effects track is changing continuously. It it it, it is when you're writing on Monday to it, it's got to be totally different in a month's time. Um, so so with action movies, I think it's always just always ask um, to keep updated um, with your sound effects team. And when your cues are approved, get it to them. The, the fact is is that that cue's been approved. They. Uh, they're listening to it in the studio. So it's out of context because we're always context. We're always playing the music louder to kind of, so that it's, there's the focus. The real life is that the music will be half the volume. And um, the sound effects team, it, it'll help. Uh, look, there, there's, a, there's one of the best action sequences I think ever, uh, fight sequences is in, is in um, um, Mission Impossible Fallout. And, and, it, it, it is one of the best fight sequences. Uh, also, there's no music in it. So I can, so I, I can say that it's great because it's not, I didn't contribute to it at all. But, um, but it's just, it's sound, it's sound effect uh, led. Um, and, but weirdly, I had been writing on it. I had, I had been in the back trying to write it. I couldn't, whatever I did was just always disastrous um, because it was, but it was pointless because the intention was always to be, you had come from this loud club scene and the, and the, and the musical school was, was there fight, was there fighting. Um, but I think, I think, um, you know, don't, don't, don't worry about analyzing it too much. You'll discover it. And, and I think look, there's great schools out there. Black Hawk Down is a, is an amazing school where, you know, hands kind of, that 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 synth through all that sound effects and gunfight just cuts through and it's something that you know had not i hadn't really heard that before um but it's it's every everything every situation is different um and i think that the main thing is dialogue keep saying to your sound effects team oh update me because that sound's going to change and um and and when i cues a cue when a queue is approved, uh, when a queue is approved, um, send them um, send them the queue. So they, the, the, it's not a shock for them when they get onto the dub stage and it's like, 
all this or, or you know a wall of sound they've got to fight with it's it's difficult and and, it, and that kind of goes into what the third seminar will be um is on the kind of the con the concept of um you know do we do we you know do, are we meant to be mixing and delivering in in surround or or in stereo it's a it's a difficult one because we we're kind of mixing in i i write in quad um but then i don't I don't, when it goes to the dub stage, they may disagree with the fact that I've put this instrument here because they may have the sound of somebody reloading the gun in that that space. So they're gonna they're gonna swap it anyway. Um, but but um, anyway, that that's that's for that's for the third semester. But keep your keep your version numbers so clean, just just because you're gonna send that to them, and then they're gonna be working to it. And if you just the, the whole like the pop industry the record industry everybody never nobody labels things it'll be so, it'll be like um i'm in love one no vox or something and that's it there's no other information um and our files you know they're going to be sent to lots of different people so always make sure that that your version numbers are right because there'll be an old version that somebody loves um and if you've not if you've wiped over or you've you've done the wrong version it'll come it'll come back and bite you so um yeah I, I i hope i was of some use um uh and and i hope you see the film most importantly and uh it's that's, it, isn't it? that's that right yeah. I have so, to that's, this was exciting to hear a little bit of a cue because i feel like the film's been so well protected and also like the soundtrack the score is not on spotify or itunes yet and nope. It's very protected, oh. thankfully. <laughs> thankfully, it's protected. Um, but um, but no, it, it's it's um, it's 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 a, a little yeah, it's a little amuse bouche. The 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 biggest the bigger action sequences. My goodness, this was only a minute. We we, we would have been here for ten hours if we got analysed some of the other ones, which do last about ten minutes long. So um, yeah, but but you know also the most important thing. Is that the major is 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 understanding also, like you know, you can see by the sample libraries for the orchestral writing. Everybody's everybody's got the opportunities now to kind of do these uh, projects. Be before it used to be very monetary based, and you know, you used to have to buy a fair light that cost the, the cost of a, you know the price of a house. Ironically, if, ironically, we've just bought a fair. Fairlight series three. It's funny how you everybody's going back into. Wow. <laughs> I know, I know, um, but um, but yeah, it used to cost a house, and it restricted people being able to write. And now, all of those sounds that we're looking at, that orchestra lineup, you you you've probably all got them. So it's it's um, it's there's there's no there's no no excuses, as they say. Listen, I, I, Lorne, I, I, I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. My really pleasure. And, and really insightful. I'm sure we'd all agree. And it's just, I, hope, I think we've all learned things. I've learned things today, I didn't know. Really appreciate you doing that. And just on, on our behalf as well, thank you so much. And thank you guys for coming. For more updates and to RSVP for future events, visit ascapexperience.com and we'll see you all soon.